So let's talk about John Ross and why it hasn't really worked out too, too well up until this point in his career. Through four seasons, he has just 733 yards to show for it and is no longer a player of the team that he was drafted for. You see the play on the screen. This is what we're going to start off with. And I think the narrative around John Ross is that he's someone who was, uh, you know, very fast, basically got drafted because he could run a very quick 40 and couldn't do much else. And sometimes when I go back and watch the tape on some of these guys, I realize that the narratives are like not really true. And it's, it's usually an oversimplification. In this scenario, it, that's pretty much it. Like that, they pretty much nailed it. That yeah, it was mostly just that he got drafted because he's fast. This is an example of how well it worked uh, in Washington, where it's going to be a cover two zone. And you see where he's running. This is a good concept because the safety who's lined up to the offense is left, which is towards the top of the screen. He'll move in on another route. John Ross can kind of get over there and try and get open. And right when this play starts, you see that it's going to be a play action. This gets thrown deep, and you see at this point, so it's already a good concept. Uh, that kind of helps get get Ross get Ross open a little bit. But then watch what he does. I mean, he just completely blows by uh, number nine right there and gets into the end zone for a touchdown. Just a, a very good play there by John Ross. The other main thing he did well was something like this, where it's just going to be a screen pass. You have a couple of receivers run deep, and he kind of runs underneath a little bit. That's how this works. And right when this play starts, you are going to see a quick pass to Ross. They get a little bit of yards. At this point, he hasn't done anything fancy, but watch what he's then going to do. He's going to do a good job of sort of making some moves and find a way to gain more yards on this one. So he was very good in screen passes and very good speed. That's pretty much all he had, but you know what? Those are pretty good traits to have in a wide receiver receiver you would think so this is his list of strengths that they gave him so extremely fast of course first uh, deep threat receiver yeah absolutely and by the way this is on Walter football it's uh, what I always use for this stuff because there's just a big database you can go back and find what people thought about him at the time when he was getting drafted so it's a lot of stuff that you would expect you know speed is a huge a huge part of it uh there's a little bit of like you know above average run after the catch skills stuff like that uh good vision quick feet but you know and clearly the big thing is his speed here uh, and some other sort of smaller things and his weaknesses were nearly non-existent i mean they said he lacks height and length uh, so that's a factor. So could struggle to win 50-50 passes against him in NFL corners and could have issues getting off of jam from big corners, which did exist to some degree. But you would think that someone with those list of pros and those list of cons, that should still work in the NFL. Like maybe it won't be a, a super star type player, but that should still work in the NFL. So what went wrong? Well, first, something like this, not everything went wrong. I mean, this is going to be a screen pass to Ross, so something we talk about, something he can do well, and watch what he's going to do. Andy Dalton makes a quick pass to John Ross, who's going to actually juke out Bobby Wagner right here and pick up some yards. You know, nothing crazy, but he did pick up some yards, and that is something that he can do. So you'd think that that at least has some value. I mean, how much do you really care about screen passes? But it, at least some. And there was also stuff like this, where while pretty much all he can do is speed, that should be able to help set stuff up, and at times it did. So this is the route he's running, and so you would think that the corner has to respect the speed he has and maybe would get caught going a little bit further deep, you know, staying a little bit further deep because it might be a go route and getting fooled. And like, as you see, I mean, this is going to be exactly that, where Ross is able to, you know, stop somewhat well, nothing crazy, but well enough that he's able to get open and make the catch. So... Ross did do an okay job at times, and he did have uh, really a two-week stretch with Cincinnati where it looked like he was finally going to put it all together and be really good. It was weeks one and two of the 2019 season, uh, and Zach Taylor's first couple weeks, we thought, oh, he fixed John Ross because he had 158 yards in week one, 112 yards in week two, then didn't do much, just 22 yards and 36 yards in the next couple games, and then got hurt. Uh, and honestly, the injury bug is certainly something you have to talk about when it comes to John Ross, is that was a it was a real factor with him is the fact that he just sometimes he just can't stay on the field. Uh, he only has 1,100 snaps in his four seasons, so that's obviously a big part of it. Is just he can't stay healthy. But then there's also just mainly stuff like this, and this is probably the main reason why he hasn't been that successful as a pro up until this point. Even when he's been on the field, he, his best moments have been a bit sparingly. I do think that there is some value in him, so he's not like a complete you know, non-factor, but he's certainly not 
worth a top 10 pick uh, like people thought he was when he got drafted. But something like this, it's a go route, man coverage, only a single safety deep, and he's going up against Richard Sherman, a guy who is known for not necessarily being the fastest corner. But what Sherman can do is he's very good at the line. And what John Ross kind of struggles with is that off the line press coverage. And it's simply just the fact that he's not a great route runner. He doesn't find ways to get himself open right at the line, which is, and you got to figure out a way to do that. Because watch how so there's some contact at the line, and then Ross is trying to run faster than Sherman, but Sherman knows what's happening at that point, and he could stay with him, even though Sherman isn't the fastest corner, and John Ross literally is the fastest receiver, and a big part of it, it just, you know, that's not all that football comes down to. There's other ways to keep up with a fast receiver, and Sherman just showed it. And the reality is most guys in the NFL can do that against Ross. And one last thing, this isn't a huge major thing, but it is something worth mentioning is that, you know, this is where Ross is on the screen and watch what happens. It's going to be a pretty easy play right here for him, but he just drops the football. And that's another another thing that he did have a bit of an issue with is he would have some drops, which is unfortunate. So that's another factor that I've seen in the NFL. So that's a lot of what John Ross is as a player. I still think there's some value here. And again, I don't, I'm not mad at the selection. Like, I think that this is a great example of why really it's just difficult to draft wide receivers. Wide receivers are hard to evaluate because the skill set you need in the college game is just different than the skill set you need in the NFL game. And that's why I'm very much against drafting a wide receiver with a top 10 pick just in general. No matter how good of a receiver you think they are, a lot of times it doesn't work out because it's just a hard position to evaluate. John Ross had a lot of tools and people figured, oh, well, he'll develop route running, right? Because that happens. Like that, It's not something that people think can happen but doesn't. Like DK Metcalf is a great example of a lot of this stuff that people thought about Ross, people thought about DK Metcalf. Metcalf, more of a physical freak, but still, there were some similarities there. However, Metcalf was able to develop, and John Ross wasn't really able to do so. You know, there were three receivers taken in this draft class, Corey Davis, Mike Williams, and John Ross, all in the top 10. That's what I mean, three in the top 10. Neither one of them have been anywhere close to worth a top 10 pick. The guy who was selected 10th, was Patrick Mahomes. So three wide receivers that have been okay selected before, you know, easily the guy that every GM would choose to start their franchise with. So that's just what makes it kind of tough. And also worth mentioning, you look in sort of these later rounds, someone like Curtis Samuel was a second round pick in this draft. Juju Smith-Schuster was a second round pick in this draft. Cooper Cup, a third round pick in this draft. So it's just difficult. Chris Godwin, another third round pick uh, in this draft class. Kenny Galladay, another third round pick in this draft class. So there's there's certain guys that like you can sit here and say, uh, yeah, that was probably the better pick here. But it's just hard to know. Like D.D. Westbrook was a fourth rounder in this. So the list goes on and on. So yeah, I guess that's my main takeaway is not that John Ross was some horrible prospect. There were some maybe lingering issues that you could have found. But the bigger thing is that just it's really difficult to evaluate wide receivers. I don't know how the Pittsburgh Steelers do it. They're like the one team that has it nailed. But even that, part of what makes them good at it is they just take flyers on talented guys in like the third, fourth, and fifth round, or even the second round, whereas a lot of other teams try to draft them in the first round. That's just not the smart thing to do. That's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.